Welcome back to what we are now calling the dirge of Officer Superstar in Disco Elysium after last episode's pretty tragic nightmare dream memory thing. Uh, you can see that apparently Superstar is uh, still a weird... Oh, there it is. He just put his jacket on like a, like a Clark Kent changing into Superman or something. Anyway, welcome back. Let's see what's going on here. We've got Kuno by our side. Let's see if there's anything on the bed that we slept in. The greasy old spring mattress lies in the corner. Yeah, no time to rest now. Cool, whatever. Kuno doesn't really give a shit. Yeah, I know you don't. Let's check this orb. You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. And this one. A moth-bitten bedsheet keeps the wind out. So I'm not sure if a rangefinder is somehow related to uh, a gun or something. Oh, there's wait, there's more stuff here. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Well, let's sift through them. Most are soft covers, serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures. Oh, well, the classic Animal Adventures. Popular depictions of man versus nature by amateur naturalists. T and T Harpin, husband and wife, widely read by people from all walks of life. Who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive? Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp, light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Electrical engineering, that's interesting, because that's sort of like the radio stuff that Ruby was doing. Been reading shit here. Hooked on the book. Wow, 58% chance on conceptualization. Should we cheese it up and change our clothes? I think we should. Let's do that. Okay, we added two points of conceptualization in clothing. We had to take off our man from Hyumdal shirt, which I'm not sure how I feel about, but we're gonna we're gonna, you know, live with it for the moment. Soft covers, serialized fantastique, and detective stories, animal adventures, a magazine for electrical engineering, and an international thriller. Also, light erotica and some historical novels from the century past. Does anything stand out as unusual? Oh, we got that extra point for all things communist. Very nice. Not that you can tell. Oh, come this on! This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fittingly, right next to the radiola on the floor. Wow, so I cheesed it up for nothing. Nothing? Nothing at all out of the ordinary? Maybe it's a little old-fashioned. There's a nude mag. More than that, you can't say. Hmm. The print in some of these is pretty small, though. This person has good eyesight. Yes, they could be a sniper. Okay, let's check this before maybe there will be more conceptualization. Soft covers. Oh, oh, it's the same fantastic. thing. Yeah, I didn't realize these were all one thing. So let's put our other clothes back on because that's about as long as we want to go without the man from Hyumdal shirt. Okay, so that's back the way we were. Let's get out of here. We are yet to look at this clothes on the clothesline or this rag, so let's do that. And we've got, ooh, a plus two empathy scarf. Nice. Wow, we can crank up our empathy if we want. Oh, and a shirt. Another, uh, it's a fallen arrow or shirt. Plus one hand-eye coordination. Let's just take a look at those. The scarf is army surplus winter scarf. Plus two empathy. Plight of the underclass. Minus one composure. Sucks to be poor. <laughs> this toey old scarf itches when wrapped around the neck. It has humanitarian aid written all over it. Yet you know that thousands all over the Isola are suffering the same fate as you. The fate of uncomfortable army surplus scarves. <laughs> and the shirt is Fallen Arrow or shirt, plus one hand-eye coordination, sleeveless aim. This Fallen training shirt has seen one wash too many. It retains its unusual design, one sleeve short, the other long, but little of its original colors. A giant F swooshes across its chest, now in gray. You can see it there. Okay, very good. And we're going to head down here to this stuff, and then I think we can go underneath. Oh, Superstar, what the heck? Okay, let's check the orb first. This great blast door must weigh over 10 tons. Rust peels off it. 
Let's check these things. Oh, uh, okay. Magnesium as a morale healer. And this locker contains some real and more magnesium. Okay. This person must have had low morale. So do we want to go through into this what is obviously another room or do we want to go outside first? Let's go. Let's go through the door. You see a small metal door nested inside a larger one. A heavy steel blast door. There is a conventional keyhole above the handle. It's very small. Hmm. Can we see what's on the other side? Another part of Death Island. Some secret hidden shit, Kuno thinks. Important shit. Okay, thanks, Kuno. You are always adding value. How do we open this? Kuno don't know how to pick this lock. This one's military shit. He looks at the door, then at its bigger brother, then at the lock. We're not going to say we don't have to open it. But I don't understand these other two. What are we finding highly unlikely? That it's military? Or that it's secret shit? I don't know. Let's say that. Fucking A. Let's get this shit open. Get to the secrets behind. Secret style. Yeah, secret style for sure. Okay, well, we'll have to figure that out. I'm sure we will. Or we may not, because this game is unpredictable. Let's go check out this exit. Oh, 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 oh. Is that the way we came in? No, forget it. Oh, yeah, I guess it's up here. Oh, that's a weird perspective thing. Let's go over here, and then... Okay, now we can look at this thing. And there's an orb. Let's check out the orb first. This hatch is jammed shut. We have a thought. Water rushes below. Far down below. Okay, maybe we can open it later. Wh why are you doing calisthenics? And isn't that going to hurt your shot leg? Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. This is the Feld Insular console. Let's run our fingers across the keyboard because that's not creepy. The keys rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. What is this then? Old hardware from the big power box upstairs. Circuit bender shit. Military grade. Could this open the blast door? Try fucking with that one. It's red. He points to the emergency dial switch. It's large and alarmingly red. Why don't we do the light interior first? The lighting in the room Whoa. turns on with a sizzle. Very nice. A dim ambient orange. Very nice. Ooh, it's kind of buzzing in my ears. Let's slide the radio dial. I'm going to do the emergency thing last. The dial slides under the glass, dark and silent. Restoring electric power has not breathed life into it. All right, let's try emergency open. The door comes screeching to a halt. Behind it, you see a hole in the concrete wall where light shines in. Very cool. Wow, look at all the dust falling there. That's super neat. It's a nice little detail. Wow, it's really banging open. Cool. Wow. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. Why? Fucking right! <laughs> What's there? Kuno doesn't know, but Kuno wants to know. There was something I needed to do with this console first. I'm not sure that's true, but let's see if we have a new option. Why? The door is open. We can just fuck on now. All right. Kuno does speak with some wisdom here. Let's head over there. Oh, don't run. Don't run. And nothing new on tab, except for obviously this open, this broken piece of the wall that it talked about. Let's check it out. We're going to exit here. So we're out back of the building. Let me zoom out a little, or a lot, as the case may be, since we've got that thought. The only thing coming up on tab is the exit and the entrance over here. So let's go check out this orb. A rubber dinghy. It's deflated. Broken. Okay. Maybe the fireman got... Oh, thought. Small white flowers blossom all around you. I'm going to zoom in a little just because I want you to be able to see Superstar. There's a guy over here. Uh-oh. Okay. Let's just check our stuff. Now, I decided we're not going to do anything. Let's just walk over there. Talk to this guy. He has a rifle. Hello. An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. It's called the deserter. Then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. 
Oh, do we think he deserted the mercenaries? He's pretty old. Unclouded by cataracts. His eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. Hmm. We can tell him, put the gun down, or, or put the gun down, or we can say, you can keep the gun, but don't move. Why don't we start at the top instead of getting all in his face? Are you the fire guy? The what now? I can't hear you. Oh, his eyesight is great, but his hearing is crap. Did you recently tell two kids to put out their fire? Two twins? I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. Oh, he's maybe he's in some sort of weird fantasy that he thinks he's still at war. The position sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. So you've somehow retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. Did you close the blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. Ah, very good. I told you not to play shitty rock. It was not rock and roll. It was Sad FM. Sad FM, huh? I always hated that station. Phlegmatic counter-revolutionary dirges. Sadness is a mental illness. A weapon of the bourgeoisie. Yeah, this guy definitely does have opinions. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate, hip gyrating, mental illness music. This is like a guy stuck in the 1950s, I guess. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is that a Bell Magrave? It's a Triangong 446. Southeast Samarin made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. So, and of course, if Encyclopedia doesn't know, it must not exist. Whoa! Massive gun! It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao Commune. Military aid. He says as he pats the rifle. It has stayed true to him. He can still make it sing. The Hin Xiao Commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from the board. Putting our hand on our belt, we say, your weapon has stayed true to you. Mine has stayed true to me, too. Yes. I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. Well, we actually haven't, though I keep forgetting to check to see if we've gone from three to five. Have you come to make me one of them? His grip on the rifle tightens. His right eye twitches. With what? Fear? Rage? Probably rage. Fuck yeah! This is happening. Kuno's super excited because of the potential implied violence. He's high off the fair. Like an untrained fighter, he leans forward, back hunched, ready to spring. We're not getting sorry for disturbing you. Goodbye. What? I'm with the police. You can keep the gun, but keep it down. Not one move. The fuck? Kuno's looking at us like we just shat ourselves. <laughs> no fucking way. Not on Kuno's life. With his finger pointing at the deserter through his jacket pocket, the kid turns to the old man. Officer Kuno's got his keel 89 pointed at your fucking head, and he is going to blow it clean off if you don't drop your weapon right now. He says all this as his pointed finger is moving inside his pocket. Even with the intensity he's putting in those words and the fidgeting in his pocket, the kid is unconvincing. I bet he is. It's ridiculous. He's armed by a kid. <sighs> to hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. Oh, way to go, Kuno. It's out of bullets. <laughs> nice. Like an amputated limb in the sand. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. What did you say? The future teaches you to be alone. Oh, hmm. That might be something that uh, Superstar can relate to. The present. Let him say it. 
The present to be afraid and cold. The old man pulls back the hood of his plastic cape and looks up into the sky. It's blue-gray, the same color as the sea. Those words, the future teaches you. Real music. Real brilliant cult. That's La Revachelier, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de soldat of the black and whites. What's La Revachelier? It is the anthem of the world revolution. One of three. In Grad, they sang brave children, favorites of history. And in Sinyao, it was... Some Samaran shit, I guess. Yes, so. How does it go, the song? How did it go? He looks at his gun on the ground and shakes his head slowly. Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. He waves erratically with his hand, annoyed that he can't remember. A little tremor passes through him. Well, we're certainly no stranger to the inability to remember things. It was dear to him. He resents forgetting it. I'm going to pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. So this is where maybe I should have thought ahead and added some points to certain skills or changed our clothes because hopefully our perception or hand-eye will help us figure out if this was the gun that was used to shoot Lele. Let's inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state. Like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm, made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Triangon, 4.46 mm, made in Sinyao. It's as he said, it's a Triangon made in Sinyao. This guy smoked a lot of people with this, huh? I guess so, Kuno. No response from the old man. The plastic cape around his shoulders rustles in a small bout of wind. This uses jacketed ammunition, 446. Mm -hmm. All right, let's stow the gun. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession in time. Well, who are you? My name is Josef. Lilianovich Dross, political commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. If this guy shot Lele, it would be a fluke, maybe. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. He says as his eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. Wait, wait! Like the fucking ancient army! You're a holdover from the ICM, the Insulindian Citizens Militia? Yes. Recruited from Jamrock in 07. Trained in the École de Control, Ariane. Consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. He was trained in the... Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to figure out how to put this in subtitles. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. You've been on this island for 43 years? No. I've been on other islands, too. I was in Resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. How have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. He says, looking at his worn running shoes. Now hold on there. What the heck? That's a choice? You could have become self-employed, create the system? Why, that's, what, that's ridiculous. What do you steal? Supplies, vegetables, 
I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. <coughs> How is your health? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. That is not a good sign. He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. Kuno's dad has this shit. Wine belly. The cops can take care of this, right? Medicine shit. With, like, facilities. That's what you get for stealing things? Superstar would never say that. Yeah, it may be serious. Cancer, even. The police can give you medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. No, this is a serious situation. You need to be looked over, and we can do it. I don't think Superstar is just going to let this go. He he has struggled to stay alive himself through trauma and difficulty. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in, and it's black. Administer morphine. Moribund. Yeah, I think Superstar would be very interested in this. How have you coped mentally? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... His eyes roll into his skull and back. I don't even know what. Inferno? Let's see what Kuno has to say. Kuno could do this shit. Live all alone like this. Kuno could hack it. Somehow I doubt it, Kuno. Good, Kuno. Be that. I saw the traitors of this city turn the lights back on. More and more each year. Ruins glittering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? You said you deserted your unit? I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. So is he Mazovian or not? A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. It wasn't reaction. You were just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he doesn't expect you to follow. I think we could follow some of it. And when was this exactly? May the 13th, 08. 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic? The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. He says, gesturing toward it. Huddled on the floor. The artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon. But I knew. I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. He says, looking east. And then what happened? I ran. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers underground, by the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. What was that? Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. 
I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. This is a pretty nasty indictment of capitalism. It's kind of amazing. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know. You know what? That the bourgeois are not human. We're going to say nothing and let him finish. I had to. I had to fight it. I had to never stop. He falls silent. His black eyes keep piercing our skin as he looks to some great distance behind us, shaking his head slowly, retreating from it. Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years? 43 years and 10 months. That's insane. It's not how a human being should live. But I had to. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. It seems unlikely that he would just decide to shoot Lele. What have you been doing all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. When the afternoon grows late, on Rue de saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Always waiting. The old man turns his eyes from the shore and back to us. What are you waiting for? For her to return. Oh, hmm. Her who? Girl child. Revolution. Girl child revolution? Always. She better come. I too have given my life to Mizovian socioeconomics. A waste. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try. Whatever I do. No, this is kind of a repeat of, of what Dora said. Like, two times was enough? No, you keep trying, you keep trying, you keep trying. Right, Superstar? What has he done? Perhaps a confession will lighten the load. Okay, let's trust suggestion. Ooh, just barely made it. What have you done, then? I just... mourn. He stares right through us, then blinks again. So what is this place, this island? It's not an island, Dwat. It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. I want to try to go through all the dialogue. I don't know that Superstar would ask this. I mean, we know what it was used for. I suppose let's do it anyway. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02 retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. You mean the retaking of Revachal, the landing? Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Okay, first, I'm not one of them. Sure you are. You're our CM. Answer me. Who calls an operation against 50 million people death blow? Murderers. I know what you mean. You don't know. You haven't seen it. Iblis. Understood. Iblis. He nods. Shaitan Ahora, the Darkened One. How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the Thames. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. What was it like? What was it like? There was hope. 
A little hope. They needed to snuff it out. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Krasmas off coursing in their veins. So even though he's using a derogatory term, an epithet, uh, I think he actually was on the side of those people. And others too. Some cordons of Revachaw was still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequencies dead. So how did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too, they'd started snitching. Wait, I don't understand who started snitching. So in the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water at the fishing village. Why don't you just walk there? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. I think Superstar would agree with that. He does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting, drinking, laughing. There's a weapons cache under St. Jelaine 22B. In the basement. Have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? Yeah, but they were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Am I scrounging on others? Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. There's a small bunker under the Fell building. Have you stayed there too? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Wow. They killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. I guess. You're still in ruins regardless. We also, I think, leveled up because we got another like five experience. All right, tell me something else. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. So you said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM, the coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. I'm inclined to think that Superstar wouldn't necessarily be so forthright about his plans to turn the RCM into a Mazovian revolutionary unit, but I also think he might see a kindred spirit or or long for a kindred spirit in this deserter. So let's say that. I know what it looks like, but I have secret plans to turn the RCM into a Mazovian revolutionary unit. Rock and roll posturing. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary. Le Parti Communiste en Soulande. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> oh, he got pretty worked up there. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. You know, he would probably take great pleasure in us taking him prisoner as a prisoner of war, but obviously that's just not going to happen. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said, You never signed the Revacholian Instrument of Surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. I mean, I could get on board with that. Is that why you've been here for 43 years? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. 
Honorable. Honor is a feudal atavism. My motive is class. So you're a communist soldier from the communist army, right? No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, oh. not the army. Oh, and that's why he said before when he ran, he left them without ideological uh, direction. But you said you were trained and assigned to the Defense Corps. Trained in historical materialism, then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. Wait, what does a political commissar do? The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. My pig asked you a question. Quit spazzing out and tell him about the... Kuno, relax. Scientific communism. A commissaire politique is a night philosopher of the revolution. A future human. So he's, his whole voice sounded different there. And in fact, it even says the tracksuit clad old man is suddenly reanimated. So that makes sense. It's good voice acting. Awakened from shutdown by the promise of ideology. Yeah, nice. That means you're a trained communist, huh? He nods slowly. Then another tremor. I'm also a communist. No, you're not. <coughs> you're a liberist. No, we're actually a communist. See, this is what happens. Like the the this is how people get beat down because they're busy infighting rather than unifying against the man, so to speak. You should engage him about inframaterialism. Impress him with all the ideas you picked up from the reading group. I don't know about that. I think that was a lot of bullshit. No, don't. This man does not subscribe to intellectual daydreams. The communism he mourns is a planetary force. I agree with that. That's sort of what I was trying to say, only you can put it much more elegantly. Liberast? A liberal and a pederast. It's what most liberals are. I'm not a liberal. I told you, I'm a communist. The old man spits into the fire pit. He does not say anything more. A jitter passes his lower body. The expression on his face is unreadable. There's some sort of interference there. Neurological. All right, so we've exhausted everything here, so I guess we'll move on. That felt actually a little unfinished. I have another serious question for you. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Okay. Uh, there's a particular person we had in mind. Here we go. A trail of blood. Even the kid can smell it. Killing people? Like straight off in them? Yeah, see, I think we're less excited about that than Kuno is. It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. You mean like lately? After the war? Oh, let's keep up this line of questioning, Kuno. There is no after the war. Class war is never over. Would he have thought of Lele as as the enemy somehow? I guess. Maybe he's a mercenary? Maybe. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. I mean, this is sort of like North Korea shooting over the DMZ, I suppose. This is it. You can feel it. Like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But. But what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. Oh, the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. <laughs> this was an easy one and we barely made it. The solution. Oh, well, we just healed our morale. I don't know if we needed it, but okay. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. So, do we go with the rhetoric's approach or hand-eye coordination's approach? Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. All right, let's ask inside. So, wait, so which one do I say then? Nothing comes to you. Silence. His black eyes look at you. And in them, a chill, like electricity running up your spine, crawling into your skull. What? All is not as it seems. Ooh, nice, Shivers. Well? Kuno turns to us with impatience. 
So you're saying you killed people after active fighting stopped? What did I just say? He keeps shaking his head erratically suddenly. He brushes something out of his eye. What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. What did Rhetoric say? He said go for it, right? Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor Cornell? The who now? He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. Wants to hear it again? I'm really not sure which one to choose. The corpse in ceramic armor hanging behind the whirling in rags. Did you shoot him? Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? Fucking tell this cop. <laughs> Kuno. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachal. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. So we have this task to extract a confession from the deserter, but I, I, I don't know that I believe he did this. I don't know what Shivers meant. A drop of blood in the saliva. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. I'm not going to hit myself on the side of the head right now. We'll, we'll probably come back to that. But let's back off for a moment. Tell me this. You lost, Dwat. You lost... Let's assess his body language. We better make this 72 percenter. We For a fucking... year old man with stomach trouble, damn it. who spent his entire life alone on an uninhabited island, he seems surprisingly fit. That's it, we say, squinting at him? He's prone to erratic hand gestures and clearly malnourished. But that's it. You can see no more by looking at his slouch frame. The moment passes, and you say... That's it for now, old man. Stay put. I ain't going anywhere. Well, you might be going to hell. Okay, that was so goddamn frustrating. Here's his gun. Triangong, oh, Triangong 446. Price is 70. Wow. The bolt action 446 caliber Triangong is the poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it is relatively precise due to a very manageable recoil thus allowing the shooter to take multiple consecutive shots fast. This particular piece is missing a scope, though. So, we are going to go back in for that composure check. Because, god damn it, that is so frustrating. We're already wearing our... Oops, we're already wearing our jeans and our jacket. All right. If we go look at composure, we've added one more point. We had two plus two from items. I found uh, the green snakeskin, snakeskin shoes that we started with at the beginning gave us plus one more. We have plenty of points we can spend, and we're going to spend a point right now. So we now have a nine, which is pretty goddamn good as far as these things go. And we're going to talk to him again. We better Millions make this. of capital. What do you want? I want to assess your body language. Ooh, plus one for possible neurological damage. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. It's precisely what you could not see before. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild. He is surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated? By what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures. Thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings, bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. Keen, even. Not senile. Mr. Dross, are you okay? How is your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. Boy, that sounded a lot like Gart. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. I'm not sure what to do here. 
One more time, Mr. Dross. The Colonel, we need to talk about your killing him. Petit bourgeois law. <laughs> this is all you care about, right? The only thing in the world for you types. A drop of blood in the saliva. Tear into him again. Pile it on him. So I might actually back off again. I kind of want to explore the rest of the island. This seems too easy. But first, let's slap ourselves. Come on, what am I forgetting? Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasia's roof. <laughs> My head hurts now. Oh, yeah. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. And Maybells on Clasia's balcony. Oh. Oh. And nowhere else. Nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them. Wait, don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Classia's bedroom. Now, they're gonna come up. I could say, ow. <laughs> I kind of really want to do that. Of course. Thank you, head. Thank you. You got it. Remember, the boot prints were like no modern soul. Yeah, but he's wearing sneakers. Nothing else comes up. You see the Kuno watch you try to stimulate the thought processes by hitting yourself. Is he going to hit himself now? I'm sorry. This didn't do anything. Usually hurting yourself does. <laughs> Yo, a wed. He gestures to talk to you on the side. Excuse us for a moment, Mr. Dross. You know? Okay, so we've got the old fuck. His eyes are bugging out of his skull with excitement. Do you think he did it? Oh, fuck. He's practically dying to big up how he did it. Just get him to cough it up. Kuno's got your back. What am I missing? What haven't I done? We never did that ballistic shit here. Let's check out where he shot my gimp. You should know that shit, pig. Good one, Kuno. It doesn't have to hold in court. Just establish a line of sight and he'll do the rest himself. Yeah, right. We need to look around. How do you think the questioning is going? Good. I think it's going really fucking well. Just cut it with the punch and shit, all right? Makes us look like we got nothing. <laughs> That's fair. You hear that? He thinks you're very close. Okay, let's do this. We'll talk to Kuno later. Kuno's in the game. Let's fucking do this, pig. So I'm actually not going to talk to Mr. Dross again yet. I'm going to look around the rest of the island. There is definitely more we can explore. But we're going to do that in the next episode. So thank you so much, as always, for your viewership and support. I love you very much. Please remember to have your pets spayed or neutered.